You may not know this, but that Lone Castle is haunted. Now, kids, don't be alarmed. Most of the ghosts we encountered so far are of a rather good, if somewhat mischievous nature. The oldest of them all is Gilbert. Sometimes, when you stay really still and really, really quiet, you can hear him outside these very walls, turning and throwing stones. Listen. Well, it seems like he's not here today, but I heard him just the other evening, and there are some who actually saw and even talked with him. That's how we know his story. Would you like to hear it? We have a reason to believe that Gilbert was a Norman apprentice stonemason. Do you know what a stonemason is? He's a person who builds houses and castles out of stones. And an apprentice is a student who learns the trade by working with an experienced craftsman who is called a master. Gilbert arrived in Ireland in the spring of 1210 at the appointment of Bishop John the Grey of Norwich to build a fortress that would protect the crossing on the River Shannon. Now, you have to understand that Gilbert has been trapped in this world for over 800 years, and his memories are somewhat hazy. He cannot recall the name of his hometown, neither can he remember details of his life back in England. But some memories stayed fresh in his mind all those years. Like the day he arrived at the banks of the Great River in the heart of Ireland. He remembers the excitement when the first stones were laid down at Athlone. Everyone kept busy, taking measurements, preparing materials and carefully placing stone after stone that soon were to become a strong castle. Each evening, after all the work stopped, Gilbert liked to walk around the rising tower, admiring the effects of work, day's hard work. Weeks and months passed and finally the castle was completed. Its strong walls reflected in the shimmering waters of the Shannon. Oh, what a sight it was. Everyone was so incredibly happy and proud. Everyone except one, one person, that is. For some reason, Gilbert could not enjoy the results of his work. This strange feeling that something wasn't right would just not leave him. He couldn't explain it. Trying to find some peace, Gilbert went for a walk, but there was no escape. No matter how much he tried to stay away from the castle, it felt as the stones were calling him in, pulling him close. There he was again at the foot of the great tower, when suddenly he stopped. He spotted it. The stone that was not a stone at all. In the shadow, just above the ground at the base of the building, was a large lump of clay. Gilbert gasped in fear. Even though he was only an apprentice, he knew that only the hardest of stones are ever used for the base of any building. They have to be strong enough to hold the whole construction. And so, clay meant it would all come crashing down. As fast as he could, Gilbert ran to see the master stonemason. There was not a minute to spare, but what happened? The second he stepped over the master's threshold, his mind went blank. He could not remember why he needed to see the master. As you can imagine, the master got a bit crossed with Gilbert for bothering him for no reason. I'm too busy to be wasting time. I have to ready myself for tonight's celebrations. Do not bother me, boy. That's right. Tonight the town will be celebrating the Samhain, thought Gilbert. It has always been his favourite festival. He loved the fires that were lit to brighten the evening. The last of the summer fruits that would be shared with friends and family. But his favourite part were the stories of the days long past that the elders told long into the night. He did love the celebration, but tonight his heart was heavy, and as the evening sky grew darker, a strange shiver went right through him. His eyes were once again drawn to the new tower, so majestic and strong in the distance on the other side of the great river. Suddenly, a cloak-clad figure approached him. It was the wicked warlock Ansgar. 
Good evening, Gilbert. I have come to warn you. I will not let you spoil my revenge on the people of Athlone. What do you mean? What revenge? How have we angered you? asked Gilbert. Though he had never spoken to Ansgar before, he heard enough to know the warlock was a bully feared by all the town folk. They deserve what's coming to them. Just you wait. Tonight, when they are dancing and feasting, I shall bring the tower down on them. And you cannot stop me. Oh no! exclaimed Gilbert, as he suddenly remembered the lump of clay at the base of the castle. I shall warn them. You underestimate my powers, cried Ansgar. I will make you forget again. As Gilbert ran towards the castle, he could hear Ansgar evil laugh. Ha 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 ha! He ran as fast as his legs could ca carry him, stumbling over stones and roots. His heart was pounding, and one thought filled his mind. I must save them! He ran across the bridge and through the gate leading up to the castle. He could hear the music and the laughter of the people who, over the last few months, had became his friends. I must save them! As he reached the courtyard, he was warmed by the bonfires that were lit to celebrate the Samhain. He looked around and spotted the master standing just at the door to the castle keep, talking to one of the king's knights. Relief flooded him. Master! He shouted across the courtyard. I remember! The castle is in danger! The word danger pierced through the excitement of the crowd. Everyone went quiet and stared at Gilbert with fear. As the knight who was talking to Master turned to face him, Gilbert froze. It was Ansgar. No, it can't be. You are too late, shouted the evil warlock as he turned towards the castle keep and began chanting his spell. Sparks crackled around the tower and people ran towards the gate. As the courtyard emptied out, the tower shook and first stones began to fall to the ground. I shall destroy the castle and this whole town. There is nothing you can do now, said Ansgar, with glee in his voice as he was about to complete his spell. Gilbert did not answer, but in the last moment he threw himself at the warlock, who lost balance and fell into the enchanted lump of clay at the base of the tower. With the last flash of light and a loud pop, the clay turned into stone, imprisoning Ansgar, the wicked warlock. The relief flooded Gilbert as he watched the stone harden. Athlone and its people were safe. But just a glimpse at the castle keep was enough for Gilbert to realize that there was no saving this great fortress. He rushed to his feet and fled the courtyard of Athlone Castle as the tower behind him tumbled to the ground like a house of cards. What just this morning was a glorious keep was now nothing more than a pile of rubble. Months passed and the life went back to normal. The work on rebuilding the castle had begun. Soon Athlone would once again have the great fortress to protect it from foes. But what happened to Gilbert? Well, he was pronounced a hero for saving so many lives. His master took him on as an assistant during the construction and promised to hire him to help build many of Ireland's castles to come. However, Gilbert vowed never to leave at alone. You see, he could not be sure that the wicked Ansgar would not find a way to escape his prison. To make sure that did not happen, every evening, just before sunset, Gilbert walks around the tower examining each and every stone. He promised to never abandon his post and so, Many centuries later, he continues to look out for the town he loves. <laughs>